Hi. In this movie, I'm going to discuss how to use symbols in Illustrator, what they are, and uh, why you might want to use them. So you've, you've probably come across this panel. It's, it's just in the window menu, um, just symbols. And actually, if, if I reset this, let, let me choose Essentials again. Um, I, I can never find it, the icon for it. I, it might be this guy. Yep, it's this little guy here. I'm going to just drag it out so we can see it. You've probably seen this, and, and if we uh, drag some of these symbols out, it just looks like Illustrator has kind of these pre-saved shapes. And that's exactly what symbols are. They're these pre-saved shapes that you can apply over and over. Um, you can apply them by dragging them out, just like this, or Let's take this back a little bit. You can also get out a symbol sprayer and spray the symbols out. Notice that I'm, I've got this cube selected. Come in here and just click and drag and it lays down a whole bunch of these symbols for me. When I do that, notice that the whole group shows up as one selection. Now if I go into outline mode, we won't see the whole group. We'll just see this kind of box. Um, so you, you don't really see the symbol if it's sprayed out in a group. There's some other things you can do in here. I'm not going to belabor the point um, because the chapter reading is, is pretty thorough on symbols. Um, but let me show you a couple of things. Uh, I can come in here and there's a symbol shifter tool. And I need to make sure that I have this group selected. Now I can shift them around inside of that set that I've drawn out first. So notice I'm kind of painting their direction. Um, by the way, the brush size works like Photoshop. You can use the left or right brackets to increase or decrease your brush size. That's a really handy thing to, to be aware of. Um, I'm going to pick a different one, though. Let's come in and choose Symbol Stainer. And I want to pick a color. Let's just choose a color. And notice as I click around with my brush, it's influencing the symbols that are below it. And if I click longer, it makes them closer to that green that I selected. If I click on them just a little bit, it just makes them a little green. Um, it's only working for this set of symbols that I've got. And I can keep on going here. There we go. So that's kind of fun. So I encourage you just to look at the different tools that are available um, underneath the symbol sprayer. Now, yeah, there's a there's a good number of them here. Um, again, the book will cover that more in detail. So I guess a question might be, uh, if if you're just looking at this, why would I care about symbols? Why would I want to use symbols? It just seems like there's a couple of these cute pre-made ones, and in fact, there's a library of symbols. But you know. From a working standpoint, why might I use symbols? Well, let me give you a, a real example. Um, I had uh, previously I'd done a job where I had an overhead illustration of um, uh, a, a housing development. And in the architectural drawings, they had little drawings of where each of the trees were going to be. And each of the trees had a very specific um, silhouette about them. So I went through and I, uh, just for the sake of, of making something here, I, I made a tree. Um, let's, let's give it a, a little bit of complexity. I'm just going to option copy it and uh, let's color the background here. And it might have had some, some extra highlights on it. Um, obviously it was a little better than what I'm, what I'm coming out with here. Um, But anyway, had had some neat little highlights. And let's pretend that now I'm going to take this tree and I'm going to use it 150 times in the illustration. OK, so what would you do normally? You might select all of it and option copy it around, right, and, and work that way. Um, or you know, if you wanted to get even more with it, you might group these things first, object group, so that when you 
selected it, it'd select the whole group. You wouldn't accidentally leave stuff behind. So now if I'm option copying, I'm good. Um, but still, if, if edits need to come in, let's say they didn't like the silhouette edge that I had made, or they wanted a color change, or they wanted both, um, I'd have to do some pretty large amount of work to, to make those changes. Instead, what I did, and, and what worked very well, was to make a symbol out of this. So I'm just going to drag this over. I have all my artwork selected here. Drag and, and drop it into the library, into the symbol library. Notice that it has this whole little thing about um, what type of flash item I'm going to make. Um, this just is for greater support of flash. Um, if you're not importing graphics into flash, you can just ignore this. Um, but yeah, like it says down here, there's no difference between these in Illustrator. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as a movie clip. Registration deals with um, where it's located on the, on the page. Um, it's X and Y coordinate. Um, there's also nine slice scaling which has to do with button design so that if you scale something out um, basically the edges remain the same the corners and the edges remain the same and only the middle part scales so imagine scaling out for instance a rounded corner button if nine slice scaling is turned on those corners stay the same small little rounded corners no matter how big you make the button. If it's turned off, then those corners scale along with the rest of it. But anyway, right now I'm going to just leave it tree as a movie clip. Okay, so now I've got it as a symbol and I can I could actually delete it. Come in and I could spray this symbol onto the other parts of the stage. Make a big brush. And actually, I did a, I did a number of these things. I, I did them sprayed out like this, but I also, because of the way the, the drawing was done, I, I had to have some of these real specifically set. So I'm just clicking and dragging some of these out. Now, let's imagine that, um, well, first of all, I can size them and stain them, all the things that you saw previously. But now I've talked to the client. The client says, well, you know, I really want this to look a little different. I like the tree, but it, it needs to be different. So instead of having to edit all of these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click or control click on the one symbol that I drug out. And I'm just going to choose break link. When I do that, it just turns back into its standard old Illustrator artwork. So now I can come in and edit this stuff. Maybe let's, let's change this around a bit. Maybe I'm going to have these guys be a little pointier. Maybe I'll add some points in general to this. Okay, so I make some modifications. Let me move these guys around a bit. By the way, I'm using Option, Command, Clicking. Command brings up the previous arrow, which is a direct selection arrow. Option allows me to select the entire component rather than just part of it. So Option, Command, Clicking is kind of a nice um, way of getting some of the functionality out of a, a black arrow instead of um, a white arrow inside of a white arrow. Boy, I don't know if that made any sense or not, but bear with me. Okay, and maybe they wanted it to look more fall-like. All right, and I could, of course, alter my shadow as well, but for right now, you get the idea. I'm going to take all of this. Again, I'm just selecting everything, and I'm going to option drag it back on top of the original symbol. And when I do that, you see what happened. Now, everywhere that symbol was used in the illustration, it's been updated. So symbols are like styles. You know, we had textiles 
Um, so if we wanted all of our type to look like subheads or body copy or whatever, we applied different text styles. Symbols are like that graphically. You can apply them once, use them everywhere, and edit and change them in one place, and they update everywhere. It's very handy if you have lots of repetitive stuff. Um, and you might say, well, gee, all I do is unique illustration, and that's, you know, maybe that's all you do right now, but keep these in mind. Down the road, you might be working on a map, you might be having uh, roads with certain uh, qualities about them, and you want to use symbols for that. Um, you might have different signs on the map. I'm, I'm just trying to think of er things where you have lots of the same artwork. Um, technical drawings have these. Uh, as I mentioned, any kind of rendering uh, where you're, you're dealing with landscape uh, stuff, you're going to have that. Um, so I hope I've added some uh, realness to why you might work with symbols. They're, they're not just these cute little things that you have access to. You can actually uh, work with them in a productive way, and in fact, they're very productive. By the way, symbols are really neat. They only take up... Um, the amount of memory that it takes to draw one of these guys and then they're just their locations are lo recorded but um, let's say this guy was complex in its size and it was let's say five kilobytes which sounds really small but for a little bit of drawing that's that's pretty big five kilobytes and I use it you know 20 times that's going to be a hundred kilobytes well in in the document with a symbol, it's going to be five kilobytes plus just the locations of where it's been applied. It makes its file size much smaller. So the file size is smaller, Flash's memory usage is smaller, I'm sorry, Illustrator's memory usage is smaller, and if you take this to Flash, Flash is happy about it too, because Flash, it's all about delivering small web vector graphics. So that's kind of the interlinking between uh, Illustrator and Flash is one of these ideas of symbols. Let me know if you have any questions.